Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Thiemann of NX Labs at Bar-Ilan University, and now we'll go to the sixth and final part of this lecture on digital on top physical verification, and it's after we finished LVS, and now we'll discuss full chip DRC and chip finishing. So the basic chip finishing flow is as follows. We have to add required structures to our layout, then we have to run design rule check, DRC, then we have to run density fill, antenna violation check, we have to run LVS after density fill and DRC fixes, and post fill assigning time, time off in a timing tool such as Tempest. So let's go over some of those. So adding required structures to your layout. Sometimes you need to add special structures to your layout, such as bond pads or bumps, seal rings, logos, fiducials, other types of structures that aren't um, actual logical structures, but they're physical structures that we need to put in before we tape out. Okay, so in general, the recommendation is make a left of these, and add them in Inovus, that will take care of it, it'll merge it into the GDS and everything will be um, fine ahead of time. But if you need to add a GDS, the first method is to create a layout wrapper in, in Virtuoso, instantiate the top level and the added layers, then stream it out or run LVS from the GUI. So what do I mean? Okay, well, we take a, our, uh, our Inovus over here and uh, we take our Inovus, we dump out uh, and we, we dump out and we get our GDS file right? our, our top.gds. Okay, this we're going to stream in, stream in to Virtuoso, and we get top, right over here, uh, top layout in Virtuoso. So then we'll make another cell called wrapper, okay? And in the wrapper, which is going to be over here, we're going to say instantiate the top, and for instance, instantiate the logo layer, and instantiate whatever. We might need a port here, and a port there, or whatever, and then this will stream out and we'll use it for our layout netlist, our .sp. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Now, every time we create a new stream, uh, a new stream out from a, a new version of our GDS, we stream it in again. Automatically, it will be updated inside our wrapper so we can stream it out again. But that's kind of a tedious type of a, a flow. It's not uh, scripted very well. So another way is to merge the GDS files with Calibre DRV, and that's kind of what I uh, more recommend. Okay, so let's show you how to do that with Calibre DRV, showing you how to add a logo. So first, create your logo with a layout editor. For, for example, use the like uh, RDL type of a layer or a logo layer. There can be different intricacies with this. Okay, so we created it with a layout editor. We made our logo like really nicely. It's something like this. Uh, probably doesn't have these nice squares. Oops, my G came out kind of funny. Okay, and that's in, in a high layer. And then we're going to stream it out. Stream out. So we're going to get logo.gds. Okay, that's real nice. Well, that's not sufficient because it turns out the caliber DRV actually wants to have uh, a top level layer on top of this. Um, uh, so we're not going to do that. We're going to uh, go over and make another layer that's called uh, a logo wrapper. We can actually situate this at the coordinate we want or the logo wrapper will be... Um, will be just a thing that's called actually top okay and it instantiates the logo over here okay and then this we're going to stream out and get logo.gds okay so that's kind of the the, the um what we're going to have here okay and then we can uh, uh we can use Calibre DRV to connect the two. Um, we don't actually have to do this logo wrapper. We can do it inside DRV. So if we um, streamed out logo at the right coordinates, what we can do is this. Calibre DRV minus a layout file merge minus append, and then this minus create top is going to actually create this logo wrapper with top level as, a, a, as the layer on top of it, it's going to take mylogo.gds and put out my logo for merging. So as I said, in the merge, we have to have the same top level, my top level, in both of the merged files. So this command in Calibre DRV will do it, or else inside our layout editor, we can make our wrapper that has uh, a cell called top that's going to have logo instantiated inside and then dump that out to GDS. Same thing. Okay, finally, we're going to merge the logo into GDS with Calibre DRV. So Calibre DRV, and it has a very similar type of commands, but instead of create top now, we just write minus top cell because both of these files now have the same top cell. Um, number one is my top level. 
that has the top cell my top level and the second one is my logo for merging which we just made it over here with the same top level or made a wrapper and dumped it out okay and it's going to output my top level with logo so that type of merge just does this uh, in a script and it's really nice to do okay so that was uh, an example of how to merge uh, special structures into our GDS. Um, now we'll discuss design rule check. So design rule check, I'm, uh, I'm imagining that many of you have done a, um, a circuit course and done some layout and run design rule check. Well, we're doing the basic same thing. We're just going to be doing it on a much larger design where we didn't actually draw these different polygons, but they were rather exported by um, some sort of a, an automatic tool. Okay, so it's the same as running DRC from the Caliber Virtuoso plugin. We can also just open the top level and open the Caliber Virtuoso plugin and run it the same type of thing. But to automate it, we can do this Caliber minus DRV now instead of uh, um, something else, and, or minus LVS. And uh, we uh, point to a run set that's uh, the DRC run set. Okay, and the run set is just something like this uh, layout path. We point to the GDS top level and uh, that it's in a GDS format. Uh, Notice that there are different defines that we can do. So usually if we open up the rule file, so the rule file is the file that was provided by the foundry that actually tells how the DRC or LVS or whatever should run, there's going to usually be a large readme at the top of the file with many options, different types of defines. It says you should define this define if you want uh, to run this type of an option. So for example, if we're running a full chip, there'll be some sort of define that's something like full chip. And so we'll write um, uh, hashtag define full chip, and then it will select all the options for for full chip DRC. Okay. Um, another thing that's really helpful is the DRC unselect check command. So if we don't want to run at some point um, all the DRC checks, a bit to save time, but mainly to clean up our report, we can do DRC unselect check. For example, if we're not at the top level or we're pre density fill, we can unselect all the density um, checks. Okay. So what is density fill if I already mentioned it? So density fill is required for all scale process technologies to reduce variation in the CMP steps and other process steps. CMP is chemical, chemical mechanical polishing, and it needs kind of a similar density between all areas, not to have all kinds of dishing and so forth. Okay, but there are other process steps that also need density, um, uh, density, uh, certain density. So in older processes like 65 nanometers, the basic rule was that if you have 30 to 70 percent of density on each layer, then uh, that's what you need. And most of the time, uh, you. You'll, your place and route tools will never pass the 70%, so um, that should be okay. But 30% often you don't use 30% of the layer, and then we have to add this dummy fill inside all these dummy layers that are just floating there to um, to provide this density fill. Okay, in newer processes there may be additional rules such as special structures to improve photolithography, etc. And again, we need some sort of a special tool that will run it. So um, we can. Use it in the place and route tool. The place and route tool has some uh, density fill options, but they run on the left flow rather than uh, uh, some other more um, careful sign off type of flow. So they don't usually fix everything, but you can for sure try to run this. The more common way is to use the DRC tool. So we just take the same DRC tool that ran our design rule check and we add a special rule file. For example, in the, in the DRC um, tool, we can take these uh, options that are DRC results database instead of giving it a, a regular database we give it a GDS file and um, tell it to dump the uh, into a GDS and the rule file will tell it how to do the density fill okay then we can use caliber DRV such as we did before with the logos to merge the results with the top level GDS okay um, antenna checks so um, probably you've learned about this somewhere that antenna violations occur when the ratio between the manufactured interconnect layers and the connected gate oxide is so large that the charge that is built up during manufacturing will, will burn out the oxide. There are two ways to get around antenna violations. One is metal bridging. We just go and uh, up a few vias until we have during the, the um, fabrication of that certain layer, we don't have this uh, too large of a ratio. So that's one way of doing it. And the other way is by adding antenna diodes. So we can add antenna diodes. They will uh, fix the violations. It's usually a good option for ECO, especially a manual ECO, because it's something that we can do pretty easily. Okay, so how do we check for antenna violations? So during the place and route flow, we can check for them. Um, this is not sufficient. Um, hopefully it's done to the 99%, but sometimes we have missing information in the lefts, especially if the lefts were provided without correct antenna information. And then we may have some um, antenna violations after running place and route. So 
we actually use the DRC tool with a run set that checks antenna violations, and then we it points out where there are problems, and then we have to go and figure out how to fix it if it's using uh, changing the layout by uh, changing the routing by bridging or by adding uh, an antenna diode where 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 it'll fix the problem. Okay, and there are usually a bit um, more stuff to do. Okay, um, for example, we might need a bonding rule DRC run. That's one possibility, for example. Okay, um, it's usually highly recommended to run final sign-off uh, static uh, timing analysis with a tool like Tempest or with prime time after uh, adding the density fill. So when we add these metal fillers, for example, they're going to cause some coupling capacitance to our signals, and we want to see that we didn't uh, ruin the timing through that. So we should run uh, final uh, sign-off uh, static timing analysis with our merged uh, GDS. Okay. Always make a dry run tape out enough time before the real tape out date so you don't run into any unexpected problems. You should send the, the foundry or the, uh, the VCA um, your dry run GDS. They should run their own checks on it and give you some feedback enough time before the real tape out so you don't run into any issues when it's too late. Okay. Good luck and most importantly, start running DRC LVS early so you know about these problems.